Davao City, one of the most vibrant economies in the world. And the world comes together because life is here. As Mindanao's primary investment hub, the city boasts its outstanding transport connection, production technologies, favorable climate, and vast fertile land suitable for agribusiness. As one of Davao City's strongest sectors, the abundant supply of agricultural products and availability of raw materials along with low labor costs make food manufacturing and other value-adding activities viable for investors. The city's top commodity produce include banana, coconut oil, and pineapple, exported to different parts of Asia, reaching as far as Europe, Middle East, and the United States. Hailed as one of the most secured and livable cities in the world, Davao City is your best investment destination, especially in agribusiness and trade. Now is the best time to invest here. Come and invest in Davao City! Nestled at the fullness of the Orient Seas, scattered gems of wonders right at the heart of the center of the Coral Triangle, the Philippines, with its 7,100 more islands, is a brewing paradise for your seafood pleasure. A country of infinites and teeming marine life sprawled across 220 million hectares of water the Philippines is home to the world's richest marine biodiversity. As one of the world's top fish producers, we give more than your usual regular seafood experience. Live, fresh, smoked, frozen, dried, fresh frozen, seasoned or plain, we offer the best variety for your seafood fancy however you like them to be. A socially and economically significant sector in the Philippines, fisheries provide livelihood to over 1.7 million fisher folk. The bountiful seafood are caught sustainably using environment-friendly fishing gears from the seas that are dutifully managed, conserved, and protected for future generations. Coastal communities flourish and transform into lively, thriving eco-districts generating employment for fisherfolk and their families. Our seafood products have undergone meticulous selection and production process. Each product is prepared and transported from fish source to production sites using best practices in food handling and safety guidelines. Food safety experts ensure that our fishery establishments, seafood processing plants, cold storage facilities, and warehouses follow quality standards from the world's food safety authorities. From the abundance enjoyed by our people, the Philippines now shares the same delight to various countries in different parts of the world.
canned, bottled, fresh, or fresh frozen, it is our commitment to constantly boost and innovate the variety of our traditional and value-added fishery products. An array of tastes and flavors, a bursting concoction of delectable seafood found in the world's richest marine biodiversity. We are the Philippines. Choose our fish. Choose the Philippine seafood. The agricultural landscape of the Philippines is the backbone of the rural agricultural small household farmers, agricultural entrepreneurs, local agri-based manufacturing industry. With the Rapid Growth Project, the Philippine government envisions a strongly rooted, comfortable, and secured life to every Filipino. The project is a value chain development-based program involving market-driven agri-production and processing to achieve global market integration, covering four commodity value chains in seven regions and 20 provinces, including Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. This can be achieved through the partnership among government agencies, financial institutions, and the private sector collaborating to provide strategic interventions such as direct assistance through matching grants for productive investments in order to address market failures and encourage private sector investment, institutional strengthening, technical assistance to the rural financial service providers, innovative agri-financing, and management support, converging to include market-driven agri-production, increase productive capacity of small farmers to strengthen market linkage to benefit from the gain of commercial partnerships, transforming small farmers to become agripreneurs and bring trabajo, negocio, and kabuhayan for men, women, indigenous peoples, and persons who are differently abled. To reach more agri-based cooperatives and rural financial institutions to further develop more MSMEs and build commercial business partnerships with the rural communities. We can strengthen and sustain market linkages in the local and global market and achieve inclusive and sustainable economic development. The Rapid Growth Project is a value chain development. It is about inclusion, convergence, and collaboration. Land Bank. We work hard to create and provide you with products suitable to your needs, complemented by a delightful customer service experience. We are Land Bank, and we are here to help you grow wherever you are. With our array of financial solutions, as well as our development lending programs, we make sure that everyone enjoys the many benefits of banking with us. We bring our financial services closer to more Filipinos beyond the four walls of our branches. Now and in the coming years, Landbank commits to serving you better. And with your support and our continued partnership, we can make a lasting impact on the lives of more and more Filipinos. We are Landbank. We bank on Filipino ingenuity perseverance that have no bounds. We're about sharing hopes and ambitions and nurturing them to life. We revere partnerships in the spirit of cooperation as keys to success. We believe in the Filipino's aspiration of triumph. We believe in you. Whatever your dream, whatever your goal, we are here to help you grow. This is our mission. 
And this is our promise to you. Most business operations and economic activities worldwide were put in halt due to the coronavirus pandemic. With this situation, Magsige MPC has adopted the present situation in order to ensure the continuity of the cooperative operations despite from the pandemic and rolled out the four identified strategy. Transition to online operations and cashless transactions. Launching of community response programs. Explore other income generating activities. And following the protocols for the COVID outbreak while executing the strategies. Transition to online operations and cashless transactions. The enforced lockdown during the coronavirus outbreak saw many organizations and businesses adopting a work-from-home scheme and shifting towards digital and cashless transactions. As part of Magsige MPC's business continuity plan and adopt to the so-called new normal, Magsige MPC is now implementing its major shift to digitalize its operations. It had launched its own website via www.magsigempc.com to gain competitive advantage and improve the cooperative's image. This will help the cooperative in getting more leads and prospects, increase sales, enhance the Magsige MPC's professional brand, and ultimately improve its customer service. Aside from the website, the cooperative also engaged in putting up of different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, with the same purpose, to gain competitive advantage and ultimately improve its customer service. And with a partnership of Magsige MPC to the country's latest digital platform that will revolutionize the way cooperatives serve their members. DG Call. The platform enables the member to transact online. No need to line up for loan application. No need to wait for weeks to receive claims and benefits. Introducing the DG Co-op Wallet App and Circle Card, where members will receive their payout, claims, and benefits without lining up. Apply loans online. No need to go to any Magsige MPC offices and pay your dues in over 40,000 payment centers. And the most exciting feature of the platform, cooperative members can shop online via DG Co-op Marketplace linked to Magsige MPC Online Store and the Magsige MPC Co-op Mart Launching of Community Response Programs in times of severe crisis, like the coronavirus outbreak, it is fitting for Magsige MPC to channel the spirit of cooperativism by extending help to affected communities and whatever capacity it could. Such initiatives include production of protective equipment like coverall suits and face masks, continuing partnership with DepEd in the implementation of the cooperatives adopt a school program, conduct of donation drives in partnership with fellow cooperatives, the LGUs in the private sector to help those in need in these trying times. Exploring of other income-generating activities. The coronavirus outbreak had put many business operations in limbo. In these uncertain times, it is crucial for Magsige MPC to look for opportunities that can help generate income for the cooperative. This includes the production of additional relevant product lines for garments manufacturing, such as the production of bed sheets and pillowcases, undergarments and fashionable face masks under the brand gray. Also, it is timely for the co-op to engage into agri-production, including coffee and banana. Other opportunities include on-demand delivery service, Magsige MPC online store that will bring the store at the doorsteps of our customers. There is also a great opportunity in the housekeeping services. The reason why Magsige MPC launched its housekeeping services, its workforce with NC2 certification from TESTA. It is also the pride of the cooperative of having its own training and assessment center accredited by TESTA with accreditation numbers 20201124 tr SHSK213012 and ACHSK0211241921304 respectively. Following the protocols for the COVID outbreak while executing the strategies, 
Magsige MPC puts on top the safety and health of the personnel executing the projects. With the health and sanitary protocols to be implemented, no doubt that the cooperative can respond and adapt to the new norms despite of the pandemic. Inspired by its tagline for the year 2020, Magsige MPC will continue to engage in the available possibilities and will show the world that we can. In 1968, the Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines came down to Davao to invite some businessmen here to form the local chamber to be affiliated with them. So a, a group of young executives headed by Attorney Ramon Tirol, Edmundo Madrazo, Joe Custodio, Joe Sibilia, those are the core group that organized the Davao City Chamber of Commerce. Of course, this is a Chamber of Commerce. The objective is to form a group so that we can have one voice, one voice for the business in our relation, firstly with the government, and then secondly, in relation to other chambers, especially the national chambers and the other chambers of commerce abroad. Davao City Chamber, or any business chamber for that matter, is supposed to help small and medium scale business improve their business. Now, how do we do that? Uh, it brings all the small business together, particularly their problem with the local government or national government. The other concerns such as wanting to meet with their supplier, wanting to meet with a potential customer, or wanting to meet with a peer businessman in the same industry. Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, as the voice of the business sector of Davao City, has been actively conducting monthly membership meetings in order to know the recent trends and updates on business sector and as well as get some insights, concerns, and issues of business community. With the Chamber's active involvement on the crucial issues surrounding the business community, it led to activities such as the dialogue on the proposed Dabao Sa Support Modernization Project, Forum on the Third Proposal Valuation Revision, and the Bangsa Moro Basic Law Forum. This is on top of the major events that Davao City Chamber conducts, such as the Davao Agri-Trend Expo and Davao Investment Conference, in order to encourage investments in Davao and Mindanao in general. The purpose of our membership in the Chamber is first and foremost for business growth. Uh, the Chamber uh, represents for us a vehicle or venue uh, for our companies, products and services to be able to reach a wider or larger audience. And this is done by the uh, activities and events that uh, the Chamber undertakes, such as the trade expositions, the symposia, the business conferences. These activities allow companies from here and abroad to get together and uh, explore what they might uh, want to undertake uh, together uh, in terms of projects or advocacies. Monthly meetings of the Chamber uh, have provided us a fertile ground for obtaining this information from the speakers, from the guest speakers of the monthly meetings and from the issues and discussions that are raised by the Chamber members, thereby enabling us to have a comprehensive view of the information that we need to be able to support our plans for running our businesses. Uh, we consider the Davos City Chamber of Commerce and Industry as a very important partner in our advocacy for SME development as well as business development. They have been our partners since uh, the, the DTI started back in 1987 and we really hold that partnership develop and strengthen so that we can reach more MSMEs. We have implemented joint projects you know, with the Double City Chamber of Commerce. We have our SME Center. We have our mentoring, mentoring of SMEs as well as uh, 
we have partnered in several big events such as their institutionalized date and other investment forum activities. And we wouldn't have done it that well without the Davao City Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber also is giving priority to anything that would improve tourism in the sense that tourism contributes a lot to what they call inclusive growth. The Davao Chamber is into a focus to make everyone involved or stakeholders in the port understand how well the port is doing and what to expect in the future. The partnership between the city government and the Davao City Chamber of Commerce has always been um, grounded on two values, that is on cooperation and on support. They have always been actively engaged in the formulation of programs that has helped propel the business environment of Davao City, seating as among the representatives of the private sector in the different boards and committees of the local government. and gentlemen and welcome to the third and final edition of the Davao Agri-Trade Expo 2020 webinar series entitled Youth in Agribusiness Shaping the Future of Agriculture. To formally start we will begin with the invocation followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Auzubillah minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim faqala rabbukum uduni astaghfir lakum amin ya rabbal alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladh dhalin amin Allahumma ajma shamalal muslimin wa kristiyan wa lumad fi madinat dabab وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد جهل تنوهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. 
Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that me may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang maghiliw, kaya sa sinahalan, alam ng puso sa dikit mo'y buhay. Upang hinihiram, kuya ka ng magiging sa manlulupin, di ka pasisigil sa nagatak. Mindanao. Good day, Philippines. Welcome to the third and final edition of the Davao Agri-Trade Expo 2020 webinar series. I am Roland Suico and I will be your host for today. Last November 17, 2020, we successfully con conducted our second date webinar via live streaming. Today, as we start the final installation of our date webinar series, we are still broadcasting live uh, on Zoom and Facebook. Let us always stay safe by following the health protocols to prevent the further spread of the COVID-19 virus. I would like to greet all our participants, friends from the media and everyone connecting with us on Zoom and Facebook today. A very pleasant morning. We hope that you are all staying safe amid the ongoing health emergency. This event is made possible through the unwavering efforts of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the people who made this event more astonishing. Please watch this. Thank you so much to all of you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is the final installation of the Davao Agri-Trade Expo 2020 webinar series. To give us his opening remarks, let us all welcome the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry President, Mr. John Carlo Tria. To our distinguished panelists and speakers, pleasant good morning. Sangalan sa Davao City Chamber of Commerce, sa among Board of Trustees and Officers, mayong buntag and welcome sa napaka-importanting webinar for our young agripreneurs. Nagpapasalamat kami sa inyong patuloy na pagtangkilik sa Davao Agri-Trade Expo sa nagdaang 22 taon sa kakayahan, oportunidad na nadadalin to sa napakaraming agribusiness enterprises. Being the largest agri-trade expo in Southern Philippines, we opted to continue under the new normal via an online platform, a digital platform to bring the same opportunities to a much wider audience. In this, we can explore many opportunities in agri-financing via our national government agencies and local government units and many other opportunities that can help in logistics and distribution of our agri-products from farm to customer. The rise of the young agripreneur is a phenomenon that we have been seeing over the last few years brought about by the rise in online and social media. That being the case, we would like to share this opportunity with many of you. And as a Chamber of Commerce, nagpapatuloy po kaming um, magpo-perso ng mga programs in order to bring e-commerce to a much wider audience, especially our micro, small, and medium enterprises at maging ang ating mga agribusiness enterprises. Klaro kaayo ang pagkadaghan sa atong mga agribloggers o uban pang mga practitioners who are selflessly sharing their experiences and their knowledge to many people who are also pursuing um, a lot of their agribusiness activities. In closing, we would like to continue to remind everybody to maintain health protocols sa atong mga offices and companies, continue wearing masks, maintaining social distancing and hand washing to prevent the spread of the virus in the workplace. With this, we welcome all of you and encourage everyone. Patuloy po tayong magtangkilik sa online Davao Agri-Trade Expo. I-share po natin ito sa mas malawak pong audience. With that, dagan salamat o maayong buntag ka natong tanan. Dagang salamat, President Tria. Today, we are very privileged to be joined by distinguished speakers who will encourage the youth to invest in agriculture to bounce under the new normal. To kick off our discussions, let me introduce to you our first speaker for today. Our first speaker is a graphic designer who eventually turned into a farmer. He is currently the farm manager and the owner of the Dalug Sakahan Farm, an accredited learning site and advocates for organic farming located in Davao City. Our speaker is known for his own artisanal tablea product, the Bagitong Magsasaka, which has reached other countries such as Canada and parts of the Middle East. He embodies a millennial farm, farmer who advocates organic and sustainable farming. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Iron, Iron Glenn Cabalida, also known as Bagitong Magsasaka. Sir Cabalida. Um, ayun, good morning po sa lahat, no? Um, so, um, sure, pwede na ma-share yung screen, yung screen, sir. Ayun. Um, good morning po sa lahat. Um, ako nga pala si Iron Glenn Cabalida, or you could call me yon. I'm the farmer and the manager of the Lubsakaan Farm. Um, my talk for today is about organic farming for young agripreneurs. Um, as a as a millennial farmer and also an agripreneur, um, I will share my story as to why I chose organic farming and why it is relevant in today's world. Um, next po. 
um, let me start by saying that health of land is linked to health and future of people. I believe in organic health-focused agriculture. Um, ako po ay isang advocate ng organic farming. Organic farming kasi um, gusto ko mag-produce ng food organically and live sustainably. I support this type of agriculture, although coming from my personal experience, hindi siya ganong hadale. Um, farmers work hard to produce healthy food. If kayo ang consumer, um, importante na malaman natin how you uh, how our food are grown, or how it was raised, or what are the processes made. Um, hindi ba siya harmful sa body? May chemicals ba involved sa pagproduce ng food? Or hindi ba nagundergo ng toxic Um, farm practices. Ito yung mga tanong na usually um, nade-disregard natin. Um, majority, na, majority sa atin, um, we just buy and eat food um, without considering its nutritional value. But please understand that everything boils down into health. So, next po. Next slide, please. Ayan. So, ano nga ba ang organic farming? Um, organic farming endorses the concept that the soil, plants, animals, and humans are linked. Um, that means healthy land equates to healthy plants, healthy animals, healthy people, healthy community, healthy environment, and thus a healthy planet. Um, its, um, its goal is to create a integrated, environmentally sound, safe, and economically sustainable production system. Um, this means that you create products and use the processes na hindi harmful wherein um, everyone can benefit, meaning employees mo, um, yung communities, and most especially the environment. Um, for a farm to be considered organic, it has to be recognized by a third-party certifying body. Or usually, um, third-party certification is sobrang mahal, lalo na pag small small scale farm ka lang. But there is an alternative. Ito po yung PGS or the Participatory Guarantee System. Um, so PGS are locally focused um, quality assurance systems of organic products um, that certifies um, na for, uh, for, for small farmers na, makaka, na pwedeng ma-afford nila. So next po. Next slide, please. Ayan. Aims of organic farming. Um, ang una, una po nito is to maintain the long-term fertility of soil. It relies on the management of soil organic matter to enhance the chemical, um, biological, uh, and physical properties of the soil in order to optimize uh, crop production. Um, to uh, Pasensya na po, no? medyo may technical concerns tayo with the first speaker. So we, we shall proceed with our second speaker. But before that, uh, again, we would like to encourage everyone to prepare questions no, for our speakers to, to be addressed later on in our open forum. Okay, so our, our second speaker has uh, started working early at the age of 17, right after completing a four-month character development training course and doing menial jobs at the training center in Bukidnon. He found his knack for business early by trading the center's farm produced to local markets 
and restaurants in Bukidnon and Cagayan de Oro. Later on, he got involved in taking agri-products such as probiotic chicken and premium coffee from Bukidnon and brought them to commercial markets and nationwide distribution. Now at the age of 30, he leads iFarms Incorporated, an agri-technology company that is set to create a digital environment for farmers and business consumers to connect and trade, which simplifies procurement and harvest fulfillment processes of businesses. He is a motivational speaker and a budding entrepreneur who has an unending quest for personal excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Jairos Ferrer. Sir Jai. Okay, can you hear me? All right, maayong buntag sa inyong tanan. Let me just share my screen here. All right. My buntag sa inyong tanan. My name is Jai. And um, I'm actually from Bukidnon and Cagayan de Oro. I uh, grew up there. Pero karon na ako diri sa Manila because uh, diri ko nag-establish um, team to be able to develop UMA. Um, UMA. UMA is a digital product which I will be sharing to you in a while. Um, ako lang sa full screen. Okay. So... Uh, maybe a quick introduction. Thank you for the organizers ng Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Salamat kayo sa pag uh, This is such a privilege and I said yes to the opportunity because we are also preparing and looking forward to launching our digital system in the entire of Mindanao by 2021. Um, what I will be sharing to you today is not just the theory of the system but also the actual implementation during the height of the COVID pandemic uh, uh, this year. Uh, I would like to um, humbly say that uh, COVID was actually the testing ground if our system was working or not. Uh, the reason why uh, I got into this um, endeavor because early on nakita na ko na there are so many issues and problems in the value chain, especially for the smallholder farmers, or we call them in our system, independent family farms, reaching new markets, reaching their, uh, reaching their, uh, their customers. And I realized a lot of it was actually because of lack of information. Mubalik uh, ako sa production when I was in my mid-20s, pero gi encourage ko sa ako mga uh, mentors and friends in the industry to be able to really concentrate on creating and market access systems designed specifically for growers and uh, independent family farms. Okay, so if I may proceed, um, allow me to, to go through my presentation. So, all right. The vision and mission of the company, our philosophy, is we want to fill the earth and make it productive. And mind you, we, we as a country is very, very capable of activating land. But at the same time, ang pangutana is if I go back to farming, is there a market for it? It's always a chicken and egg issue, right? But also, we want to dignify agriculture as a noble and worthy profession. And to see young Filipinos go back to their land and choose the agricultural path as a way to prosperity. We as a country really need to see that the agriculture industry is, is, has so much more potential to what it is today. Currently in Mindanao, we see so, much, so many productive land. But also in other parts of the Philippines, there's also a lot of uh, opportunity to grow independent farms to be able to feed municipalities and local uh, local urban areas. The problem is, I do not understand why the local community needs to go to a different part of the country, particularly in a uh, high trading post, to be able to source their uh, goods. So there must be a way, in my mind, there must be a way to connect these two, right? It's a supply and demand issue. Now, what have we been doing as a company? We are a duly registered company. iFarms Incorporated uh, was registered in SEC since 2015. But what was happening between 2015 to 2019? 
we were actually going around different parts of the country to understand and talk to various parts of the value chain. We were talking to growers from the highland, uh, the highlands of uh, Vizcaya. We were also talking to the lowlands of uh, Nueva Ecija. We also went to Mindanao, Nagadtumig um, Bukidnon, Nagadtumig Maguindanao, to really understand different types of farming mechanisms in the country. And we started to understand and use the method on user-centered design. Because right now in this day and age, technology is actually all about behavior and, and uh, intuition. So whatever we, I will be explaining today was revolving around the needs of a human being, okay? How people would react to things and all of these things now. So during our interview and uh, during our research and development phase as a company, we concluded these three major problems, okay? First is production and market mismatch. Uh, sa mga growers, sige tag-ingon, okay, na morning na asa ko ah, okay? Kinsay gusto mo palit anip pag, pag abot sa harvest, right? On the buyer side, and I see it in different parts of the country, and especially sa mga restaurant operators, uh, um, different um, different commissaries, they would always ask, I need these raw materials, where can I get it, right? So, mo ng mga big issue. So there's production and market mismatch. Second is there's high wastage due to poor handling practices, right? So high produce wasted, and usually it's around 30% goes to wastage because of um, the lack of use and tools of post-harvest activities, right? And many of our smallholder farmers in the countryside need these, these opportunities and tools to be able to get their produce into a marketable state. Right. The third one is manual purchase uh, purchase practices. Okay. The reason why we concentrated on these three problems, especially for the manual purchase practice, is because mauni siya ang ginatawag nato ng intangible uh, activity. Meaning, dili siya makita, but it's more on like relationship information. How do I get the order? And what's happening today is. Many of our country, uh, many of the independent farms start to only look for market the moment they, they harvest, right? So it, it, it varies in different parts of the country, but sometimes producers spend a lot, most of their time in the production side. But you have to understand if you run a business, there's also the marketing side. So there has to be a healthy ba balance on both. So moving forward, these are the three main problems that we would like to solve as a company. To simplify, ang pangutana lang sa mga farmers nato sa countryside, no? And if you produce something, it doesn't necessarily need to be just vegetables, but as long as you farm something, ang pangutana diha is morning na asamua. This is what we have. Who wants it? Okay? Sa pika side, mga, mga tao sa syudad, or usually mga urban areas, okay? Mga municipio, mga municipalities, or... Uh, mga barangays, okay? Usually nana yung mga wet market, but there is always someone there asking, morning kinang lan namo, na where can I get it? This is what we need, where can we get it? So the UMA system, which I will be introducing to you, revolves around these two questions. So I'd like to introduce you to UMA. What is UMA? UMA is a B2B farm direct marketplace that allows buyers and buy prod to buy products directly from farms even before they are harvested. Take note of that, even before it's harvested, you can already start to market products using the UMA system. Secure your business farm fresh supply. This is for the business consumers. For example, commissary or, or processors on all of these things. No? There are so many people who will immediately get into the business of food, especially pag nanas sila na save na kwarta. Right? The question always like, what business should I get into? And usually, the first, first priority would always be a food business. Then the next question is, where do I get my raw materials? That's where UMA system would like to answer these questions. Plan ahead with, with our weekly harvest forecast and place your order for delivery. So what we have been doing as a company for the past three years is developing technology for growers, and buyers to literally directly interact with each other and simplifying the information flow for them to make timely business decisions. 
we are a data-driven supply chain. And we feel that there needs to be a heavy focus of people using these technologies. What used to take hours to take orders can now be done in seconds in a click of a finger. Okay. Now, to, 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 to dive more into this, the digital system is what we call is what we call the intangible system, right? But we can actually experience this, right? But we would like to partner more with different people in the in, in different parts of Mindanao, especially for 2021, to be able to enable you and your family farm business and reach markets in different parts of the Philippines um, and also in Mindanao. Uh, we are also engaging more now with export opportunities. So we are um, excited to, to, to share these things to you. So the data-driven supply chain now will be partnered with key partners who have the infrastructure. So we already have identified key partners and we are still looking for more partners in the other parts of Mindanao. So please reach out to us no? because we feel that if we're able to integrate this all in a system, it will be easier for all of us to exchange and the timing of harvest to market will be actually answered in our supply chain system. As a company, we have been engaging also with uh, accrediting um, smallholder farmers or independent family farms to at least have the good agricultural practice program in partnership with the Department of Agriculture. Nainangutana, let me share to you a story. Nainangutana, uh, one of the attendees of this particular batch, nangutana sila sa kua. Jai, nga nung mag-GAP mag pa man me. And they were telling me, I was telling them two things. In the digital world, you need to build the level of trust. Okay? And in the digital world, we are providing transparency. So if the buyer who is looking for a particular supply and you have it, but you don't have the credentials, if quote unquote that we say, it it gives a higher chance to the person with the proper credentials to be the preferred supplier. Right? So what we are saying is we will continually engage with different organizations to be able to address and transfer good practice knowledge no, for uh, for application in the farm. There are so many farms that are we are so excited to to enable and activate with because and engage with because they provide unique products that are that not many Filipinos know. So UMA as a system would actually be a platform for us to showcase what is unique in the Philippines. So we're very excited to work with that. So the big question now is how did the pandemic and calamities of 2020 test the viability of UMA in actual operations? So to those who are watching, uh, this year was actually our test pilot year. And I'd like to show you three use cases of how the digital technology applied in proper supply chain management was able to adapt to different scenarios uh, during the height of the pandemic and uh, uh, moving forward still happening now. We applied two uh, systems, okay? First is actually the wholesale buyer solution and the break bulk solution. And allow me to explain these things further. Um, the wholesale digital wholesale system was actually our test pilot. And this is already available in the website, www.uma.ph. And it's a very basic e-commerce platform. But what is important here is how did the data actually generated from this e-commerce e platform affect supply chain? So the data that was generated or the orders that were generated from this platform was given precisely to the post-harvest activities for them to do engagements on the proper handling. And mind you, part of our, part of our uh, system is to be able to introduce good handling practices like the crates that you see on the presentation and also here behind me. Because of good handling practices, the integrity of the produce was actually preserved. The integrity of the produce uh, endured travel time. And when it got to the customer's uh, uh, delivery bay, there was close to no damage. And I really feel that smallholder farmers should start to consider 
these types of practices to be able to, number one, maximize profitability for your farm. Number two is also um, engage with better handling practices and really be able to expand and become a preferred supplier locally. Wholesale system is geared to serve food distributors. So because of this, this was during the height of the pandemic during March, we were easily, uh, we, we easily moved uh, mga products, fresh products into fulfillment services uh, for the households and communities because this was an emergency situation. So we also as a company started to give food lane passes. So while others were staying at home, we as a company were very busy and on the ground. So you could say we were literally doing frontline work for food security. So UMA was also identified as a food security system, which I will show to you also in the third case on how this is applied in emergency situations and calamities. The second proof of concept and case study that I'd like to show you was because there's so many products in the Philippines that actually need um, um, proper marketing. Uh, there's a lot of products in the Philippines and farmers who dedicate their craft and time to be able to perfect these products. The problem is how do you now translate that into a market acceptable product? So there is also a level of what we call agri-education. I really feel that there is a big need for the education sector to be able to introduce these basic things. And we really feel that there has to be a way to dignify agriculture in the education sector as well. So mind you, we start, when we started to engage with that independent farm in Vizcaya, he said to, sabi niya sa amin, ingon siya sa mua, Jai, this product I started to, to plant 30 years ago. The problem is, he just, classify lang siya as regular citrus. Citrus has many, many varieties. So we particularly chose this fruit to be able to prove a point that we, there are all of these unique products in the Philippines that not many people know about. So we created a campaign to educate the market. So since we already knew that I harvest na paabot for a certain date, okay, we started to see the campaign uh, weeks in advance to prepare the market for it. Because we're data-driven supply chain and even our, our food handling solutions was given, uh, was, was assisted to these farms, precise farming data, farm received precise data of what the market needs. So therefore, for example, for this particular round, this was two tons worth of uh, satsuma mandarin. Okay, since nakabalun na me nga naay mo abutay nga two tons, even the market knows that there are two tons. Therefore, the whole system was actually a sold before harvest system. Bag upasagi pitas na anasay buyer. Okay. I understand for big uh, for big uh, industries uh, in the agriculture um, so, uh, agriculture industry like the bananas and pineapples these are pre contracts but we created a system for smallholder farms to be able to engage in this level of uh, business activity to make it easier for them to reach markets on the consumer side assured put sila nga nay mo abot nga nga products and then last stage we we started to do uh, implement the, we call it the UMA box to make it simpler for people uh, in the households. Kay nakastak man ang mga balay sa, ang mga tao sa balay. So, what happened here is we were able to engage and enable create jobs. We were able to create jobs for people because they started to see nga, uy, pwede kong magbaligya sa among community. Okay, so the resellers, uh, nag-increase ang among resellers and their uh, we, we were having doctors who were looking for extra sources of income, attorneys, legal people, um, different types of people coming over, entrepreneurs coming over to, to start to distribute in their communities. Okay, And where did this all start? It started with date, proper data management systems. Because of that, I'd like to show you some statistics. For one particular farm, for, for one particular fruit, and for one particular season, we were able to move 14.1 tons of this fruit because there was a good mix of introducing things to the market, proper food handling system, and proper data management systems. And that's the whole entire UMA in practice. Because of that, we had a less, less um, than 3% damage as well, comparing it to industry practice of 30%.
the, the last use case that I'd like to show you is actually actually happened last week uh, during the during the height of the typhoon Ulysses. And during the during the storm, gitawgan ko sa isaka chef and sabi niya, Jai, mag mag donation campaign uh, mag uh, food uh, food security campaign na sa daan eh, because again expected na gidna with any super typhoon there will always be a food security issue. So gitawgan ko nila and then say, can you create a a donation drive called Farm to Feed? So we created Farm to Feed program, and it's the same process because of proper data. We were able to facilitate um, orders from the farm who had the production level all the way down to the supply chain. And because the need was to be able to provide hot food, we, we started to partner with this particular chef who had the commissary. Moni Naitabo, because of proper data management systems applied and proper supply chain systems, we were able to mobilize 4.5 tons in less than 12 hours. And then we moved it to the kitchen, na sila nagluto, and then another group did the distribution in the typhoon-affected areas, uh, particularly in the Marikina area. And th this, this program is still ongoing. But to prove a point, the, the, with proper data management systems and the, uh, enabling people through a mobile app, this is just one tool. But we are looking forward to work with more communities and uh, people in the business sector, especially in Davao and the Mindanao region, on how to provide food security in mun multiple municipalities. But in this case, we were able to respond in a very quick way uh, for the affected people of the typhoon. So last slide would actually be, why would you use UMA as a, as a system for your farm business? Also, why would you use UMA to use it as a procurement system for your food business? Because number one is we provide proper farmer information. Gone are the days nga magtago tago sa supplier. Okay? We would like to share to buyers that money gikan asa gikan ang imong food. Right? Right? So money siya nga tao ang nagproduce sa imong food or money siya nga family farm. So we're excited to showcase mga family farms in the in, in every part of the country. Uh, para ma identify sila. So we would like to provide that transparency system. Also, second is price transparency. Uh, we are allowing the growers to put the price that they deserve and allowing them to be able to really um, um, put the price that they uh, that is delivered. Okay. So these are the details that we would start to explain as we engage with different family farms. Third is timely market information because growers would like to know kung na by market ang ilang i-harvest, okay? So, uh, because of digital systems, we you you get to put it into this into the platform and allow other communities to be able to see it prior to even harvesting, okay? So, uh, lastly, uh, proper food handling system consistency of supply will also be applied for the grower side. So consistency of supplies because mangutana ang grower na abay market and the, uh, from the buyer side mangutana sila jai this is what I need regularly or uma right so we start to program plant already with our partner growers to be able to provide that consistency of supply to the market and then of course payment options with digital payments everywhere we are integrated with this as well overall because of um, enabling farms with the proper tools for marketing it will now allow us to give better um, value, overall value as a farm business, and also overall value to the customers as well. And overall, we would like to uh, decrease the wastage as well um, happening because of uh, all of these inefficiencies. So by making your business efficient, we believe that it will also increase your profitability as a business. So thank you. I'd like to, for you to uh, I'd like to encourage you to visit our website um, also to engage with us through our Facebook page we have a chat bot for you to be able to start inquiring if you are a farm in your community and you would like to have our system as part of your marketing uh, efforts please reach out to us we're more than willing to engage with you and we are preparing for the launch of Uma in Mindanao for 2021 so we're looking forward to that so Thank you so much and good morning to everyone.
Okay, thank you so much no, for that very informative presentation, Mr. Ferrer. No, Jai will be uh, joining our discussion in a while no, later on. But uh, before we proceed, again, we would like to thank everyone joining us today from their respective homes and offices. You are watching the final edition of the Davao Agri-Trade Expo webinar series. Now let us always stay safe by following the minimum health standards to prevent the further spread of the COVID-19 virus. Okay, so medyo nahirapan ho tayo for the, to, to bring in back uh, iron. No? Medyo may technical difficulties talaga siya dun sa connectivity niya. And so with that, uh, hindi na natin makakasama ulit ata si Iron no? as, as a being mentioned by our secretariat. Uh, okay, so sh shall we proceed, uh, Kia, on the open forum instead? We have two questions here, uh, Jai, no, from our participants. I, I hope we can we can address address this. Uh, and dito kasi. Ay, yeah, sige. Tayo tayo na lang muna dito ngayon. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> sige, ganun talaga no because of that uh, uh, connectivity issue. Uh, medyo nahirapan no talaga tayong ibalik to si si Iron. Okay, so the first question uh Jai is uh, what particular ito talagang this is really uh fitting for you no. What is what particular technical skills uh, Jai should uh, should be developed or enhanced by our youth, so that they can be employable in, in the agribusiness or in the agribusiness companies. Okay, um, maybe, sir, no, I will share from my experience. Um, during my er mga around late teens to early 20s, I was always involved, first primarily as a volunteer, in different uh, agriculture um, efforts. Um, I was working for a foundation and it allowed me to develop skills over time. Um, it also helped me develop my work ethic and character in terms of like handling um, situations. And if you're in business, you're always about solving problems, right? Uh, every day you need to be, have that mindset of solving problems before you actually uh, start your own company. Now, if you start your own company, that's actually 10 times more problems, right? So, so I, I feel that the youth should actually get engaged first with number one, volunteerism, or actually be employed. Because it's very important for you to, to understand that, first of all, for example, submission to authority, right? Uh, I, think, I think people need to understand that you need, you, there needs to have that kanabitang uh, dapat na kay boss, Kabaw ka mag-follow, right? Um, that's one. But on the on the on the technical side of things, you can learn that. Eh. You can learn that by reading. You can learn that by actually practicing it on the actual basis. The reason why we were able to create these solutions was because ako mismo, for example, logistics. Ako mismo ga drives among truck, diba? So when we were delivering, you need to learn how to wake up at two a.m., three a.m. Uh, for one year every day to be able to start delivering to different uh, different customers, no? Um, you get your hands dirty, you get involved. Sa buntag, mag-deliver, sa hapon, mag-meeting. Mga yung nanak ba? So, maragoy na itabo. So, so, these things you need to learn because it's it's a critical skill to to run a successful business, no? And kami, we're still in the learning process, no? Because for the past few years, sir, uh, we were building the solution and we needed to practice first the solution if it was effective right and now that we have uh, we're done with that phase of the company we're ready to share this to more people on how it works so uh, yeah that's one okay no, thank you so much Jai. No, I, I would really agree with you no kasi hindi naman lahat nakukuha dun sa mga formal trainings or even in a for, in the formal uh, education experience is still the best the best teacher so yeah tama yun, no? uh, you will also learn the business processes no as you uh, involve yourself in employment so yun, marami kang matututunan dun. Now, thank you so much for that input uh, Jai uh, may isa pang tanong 
para din sa imo hatanan karon jay kay wala makailain ka uban <laughs> Now for the second question is for those who have no background in farming where where should they start if they wanted to venture into agribusiness or farming Okay ako I would recommend no uh, you should ask yourself what aspect of the value chain would you like to get involved with kung sa production side na ay na ay farm uh, inputs or uh, the the starting side of farming on the other side naman is added value processes for example if you're if you'd like to make chocolate diba so mahimo kag chocolate diba so it would be nice nga you understand the added value services and mind you daghan kay products sa Philippines that need added value services okay so that's still part of agriculture industry kami the reason why we decided to concentrate first on the IT aspect of agriculture is because everything starts with proper information okay we will allow data to help us help a community develop their agri sector So for example if we launch in a specific region we would know kung unsay mga mga interesting nga mga products dia then therefore we can drive investment now into these communities because there is we can showcase now that there could be a demand for these things no so it all starts with information for our for our company but if you're looking for a business to get into i feel that you should uh, consider first what you are already good at okay Now, if you really want to venture into the agriculture sector, you need to commit. Dili siya pwede pa weekend weekend farmer lang, okay? Because I've seen so many people na gusto mahimog magsulod sa agriculture, gibuhos nilang ilang resources dito, but because they don't treat it as a business, malugi, right? So kami uma is actually one of the solutions that we are developing. Uma as a system, you can go to uma.ph. And really see how it works, no? Uma.ph is actually the marketing tool for independent family farms to reach better markets, right? So it's a platform that you can actually start to showcase. And mind you, in a company, grabi ka mahal mag hire ug marketing, tama? Yeah. Deba? Kame we provide it for free if you're a grower, but we also would like to be able to engage also with post harvest harvest handling practices. Right, um, and all of these other things. Now, so if you would like to know more on how to engage with us in your community, please reach out to us via email. Uh, we're looking for more partners in the community level to implement our digital system in uh, in your region. So yeah, those are opportunities that we can offer. Yes, no, very good. No, that's a very good point, Zaino. I'd like your point, Bana. Sa farming, kasi maraming aspeto na pwedeng titingnan, and you really have to define no, and kung asa dito ang imuhang kanabang where among those uh, elements in farming that you are really passionate about kasi that's that's very 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 pero ang passion ano ha so Roland ah, mawala po ng passion ha ah. you really have to be committed <laughs> yeah yeah correct right? <laughs> commitment is very important okay yeah. sige may pumapas pa ah uh, uh, ah eto I'm, I'm not really sure ah uh, Sir Jai, if you are going to reveal this, pero isa ito sa mga mga tanong na kailangang sagutin, kailangan ba? Uh, the question is, may I ask if how much income change no has transpired or experienced by the farmers involved in your supply chain, and how do you sustain a farmers' engagement? Okay, so very good point, no. Um, so we're not just involved with digital systems; we also involve ourselves with A committed partner or grower sa ilang supply chain system. So since the start of the pandemic at tung March, uh, the farmer groups that we started to engage with for the past two years. Okay, imagine just to implement the Great Sir Roland two years yan, kasi behavioral change yan, de ba? Mm-hmm. But when they saw the effectivity and the continuity of orders every time nga nga naay mo may mo sulod no order. And the efficiency of how to get it from point A to point B, overall they were a- able to experience better operational uh, cost, meaning na 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 forecast nila ang ilang activities. Now, um, have they uh, change of income? I believe so. For ta- for example, katong sa among um, satsuma campaign from August to September, 
uh, when we engage with that family farm, they said that the turnover rate for their harvest was much quicker compared to all of their years of harvest. Okay, and they would like to continue this again next season. But this time we will also have improvements along the way sa among gibuhat. So because of that, they were able to around um, they were able to increase their buying value to about 15 to 20 percent more because we simplified the supply chain uh, from eight steps to three steps. Okay. And I, I can share that to you um, in in uh, in detail, uh, may, maybe in a, in a private in, uh, conversation. But ang nakanais ani is we're, if we're able to streamline activities from farm harvest, from post harvest activities, all the way down to supply chain, because we can already see that there is a market for your product. I believe overall the farmers will continually be engaged with us. Now the platform gives you a higher chance to market your product. At the end of the day, it's still going to be the, the buyer's choice if they will buy from you or not. But we as a company provide that transparency platform for you to be able to transact in harmony. So, info. Okay, no, thank you so much. So, may, ano talaga, may, may significant uh, uh, change talaga when it comes to earnings no, pagka gumamit dun sa platform na yun. Because there's an access already no, from the far on, on the farmer side to the market or to the buyers or the farmers. Yes. Okay. Uh meron pa ba? Ah, uh, okay. For a while. For a while. Uh, may, may isa pa daw tanong dito. I think may isang tanong na pumasok kay Sir Ronel Victor de la Cruz. Yeah, pero nasagot na ata yan kanina, Sir Jay. Okay. Ah, this, ah, this one. Which functions in the agri-value chain you are good at? Uh, and then can you please share specific uh, processes, activities that you do to encourage youth to be more involved in agri. Okay. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, Sir Roland, no? um, if people see that there is a opportunity, uh, people will move. Okay. Um, to be very specific, we concentrated on a uh, proper food handling system. For example, kaning inyo makita na crate sa likod. This is a technology on foldable crates. Right? So, we as a company invested into these crates because we wanted to engage with mga farmers na involved na sa UMA, um, UMA system and provide them that service of you know the crate system para ang food handling mo about from point A to point B na plus tarpa. But this is for fresh items. Now, um, one of the projects that we're starting to lead now is a post-harvest activity, uh, post-harvest facility uh, in Rizal for a specific community there. And we started to understand first, also may product na naasa ilaha, and mostly it was root crops. So therefore, we are designing our facility to be able to handle the proper washing mechanism, sorting mechanism, for them to be able to have these services in their community. Mind you, the way they do it is mag-harvest sila, mag-hulat lang sila buyer Usay, malata na lang sa dalan. Okay? So, Imagine by putting up a very simple facility, it will now allow them, and imagine uh, internet enabled pa na siya, Sir Roland, di ba? So, for example, kung ako si farmer mo, at ako dito sa center, uma center, and then tanaw nila, uy, na, na ako'y paabot nga ube, nga seven tons, for example, okay? Na by market ana. So, they can put it up into the system, and then we'll wait for the market. Hey, sa market, dali raman kina siya, it's just a push notification. Diba? Mag-beep lang na sa cellphone. Uy, naipaabot nga seven, seven tons. So mag-reserve, reserve na din sila sa system. So prior to even harvesting, we would like to be able to provide that system for them to broadcast what they have. And then, for example, nanay schedules and all of these things, ma-plastar na ang post-harvest activity sa isa ka-farm. Right? So where do we concentrate? We concentrate on putting the systems in place for a specific community. Okay, but first we already have the system for the human being, for the farmer, to engage on the right information and them to be able to upload it into the world. Okay, so info. Yeah, no, thank you.
Thank you, Jaina, for sharing that to us. Uh, we'd like to hear also from our from the ch our chairperson of the of this uh, Davao Agri Trade Expo and the vice president for industry of Davao Chamber, Miss Sherilyn Kasuga. Adam, good morning. Good Hi, morning. Ma yung buntag ug madayaw diha kaninyong tanan. Thank you so much. Uh nalipay gyud ko no. So anyway, I just would like to to raise lang no. Uh itong um not raise actually just to comment. There there's this the uh, from the Q&A. I'm not sure if this has been already um answered. But what particular technical skills should be developed or enhanced by our youth so that they can be employable or they can be uh, employed in the agribusiness subsector or agribusiness companies you know um i'd like i just would like to to answer that you know in a more uh, in the most practical way that i i know because i'm not really a an a very agri tech no no um having a just to put up a, a farm school myself just no uh just this year um, I have actually um, recognized the importance of trainings. It's, it's very important. Eh? The trainings, um, the workshops that TESDA is actually providing. We have so many, like the agriculture, the, the organic agriculture production NC2, that is National Certificate Level 2. Meron tayong agriculture production, uh, ano no, crop production, meron din. National certificate yan. Meron din yung mga sa dairy production, milk production, national certificate din yon. Meron din aquaculture, national certificate din yon. So actually, marami talagang ino-offer ang TESDA. Um, hindi lang sa TESDA, kundi marami din. Meron din tayong agricultural training institute na pwede tayong lumapit sa kanila and they'll be able to tell us, to inform us, no, the following courses na pwede or qualification, they call it qualification, na pwede nating masama, pwede tayong mag-enroll. Ngayon, it, they, they did not stop of providing these courses, these workshops online. No? So, although I have to admit, mahirap, but, but right now, actually, I'm... Um, uh, we're advocating for the training despite of all of this. May I, I partnered with um, with the Kabalikat sa Kabuhayan on, mm -hmm. ag on, on sustainable agriculture by SM Foundation and also with TESDA. So we are giving us uh, having the scholarship. TESDA is, is providing scholarship for our organic agriculture NC2. This is for farmers. No so hindi lang sa providing livelihood no yun yung kasing ating ipinaka it's actually the sustainability eh yung pag-aaral kapag ititrain mo sila syempre yung mga matanda ayaw na niyan diba kasi ano mang gagawin nila sa kanilang NC2 na yan unless gusto nilang magbiging instructor but you know i'm so surprised kasi i i have like 60% are young are young parang nasabi ko wow Agrilenial, ito yung the next generation. I don't know why. Pag tinanong mo nga sila pag sa first day, eh, bakit kayo aside sa may allowance ma'am eh? Diba? Or wala kaming ginagawa, pinupush kami ng mga magulang namin, ay mag-aral kayo. Eh meron kasing face-to-face, -face, no? But agricultural, uh, meron pa dyan sa ano eh, kapatid, agriculture mentor me program. Meron din. Sa go negosyo, meron din. Ang, my point is, you just need to look very, very... No, alam mo yan, alam lang natin. Ganap, saan ang may training? Saan ang mag-ano? Alam nyo, marami pong programa ang gobyerno natin. No? So, training, training, training. Mag-attend tayo ng mga training dahil doon tayo makakakuha ng technical skills and then you incorporate that in your day to day lives, no? Kasi ang agriculture hindi lang sa pangkubuhayan, paririn sa personalidad mo. Dito na tuto talaga ako. Agriculture basically should not be very difficult to be learned for the youth, no? It should not be difficult to be learned because it's common sense. Feeding the people is common sense, right? So 
we, we just need to equip ourselves uh, better and with all of this, you know, with the Google and all of the, kahit sa ibang bansa, pwede ka mag-training, marami pong libreng training. So I encourage, please, look look for these free trainings and ATI and TESDA, DOST, DTI, uh, DA, marami pong mga training. Wala lang nag a hindi po nila alam. Boy, naka-nice ka ron, Ma'am Sherilyn, no? Because the information is free, right? Yes. It's really the application of information into practice which will yes. really make the difference. Oo, right? oo. We're very excited. We're very excited. Lagi? Oo, we're very excited. Daghan magkod maunahan na, you know, that agriculture is very difficult. Ah, dili ta magtanong para yeah. kainin ka kapoy, sakit ka ayo sa likod. Tinuod man na, di ba? Kung nabitaw, kitang mga batanon, kita na po eh, muun sa, but we can do it smartly. Yes. Diba? Actually, okay, Karun, ma'am, there's a lot of tools also now available to make a job easier. Yes. Right? Diba? What used to be like minutes and hours before, pwede, for example, na yung mga seed trays ka ron nga, imo lang ipislit, pila na ka-seeds ang musulod. Diba? So, there's so many efficiency tools that we should actually put together. No? Um, and for example, ma'am, just to continue with what you were sharing, for example, if a farmer has all of these training certificates and then kabalo ang market nga na asya ana, he will become a preferred supplier for this right. for this. Uh, for these things, no? Be, yes, like right now we're providing GAP, good agricultural practices. That, that, yung mga produkto mo, mag, mag yung premium yan eh. Yes, so, maraming opportunity. We just need to really look very closely where, ano, no, hanapin lang, no? Yeah. Kaya <laughs> nga, nasa harapan mo na, ayaw mo lang eh. <laughs> yeah. Tinood good. Tinood good. Thank you, uh, VP Che, no, for sharing that. No, thank you, uh, VP Che, for converting your agenda no, into something else. No? Nakikita ko uh, ang daming mga uh, development niyan sa farm ni Ms. Anil Vice President Sherilyn. Thank you so much. No? I, I think swak na swak itong pinag-uusapan natin na uh, training for, for, for uh, VP Che and then ito namang IT platform for uh, Sir Jai. No? Thank you so much for sharing. May, may mga tanong pa po ba tayo? Uh, I think we have already answered all the questions. So, kung wala na ho tayong questions, then we will now proceed. Uh, again, once again, we would like to thank uh, Jairo, no, Sir, Sir Jai Ferrer, for, for being with us no, this morning. Uh, marami pong salamat no, for, for sharing your time with the Davao City Chamber of Commerce. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so last October 30, you know, we officially launched the Davao Agri Trade Expo online exhibition. This is the first ever virtual date that will allow exhibitors to showcase their products and services for a whole year online. This will serve as a platform to promote and create linkages and partnerships among local and international agribusiness stakeholders. This will also help several agripreneurs recognize the potential of digital technologies in boosting their business and in streamlining the agri-food supply. To join the online exhibition, please watch this video.
customers, vendors, and suppliers, now this is now your chance to connect virtually. The online exhibition will continue until June of 2021. So for those who are interested to take their agribusiness to the next level, visit www.davochamber.com slash date for more information. Now to officially close today's webinar, let us all welcome again, this year's Davao Agri-Trade Expo Chairperson, Ms. Cherilyn Kasuga. Again, salamat Trustee Roland. To our resource speakers, Mr. Jairus Ferrer, napakagwapong young farmer, bright and ano, smart young farmer, the CEO and founder of iFarms Incorporated. Uh, to Mr. Iron Glenn Cabalida, sayang no, but um, definitely he will be in uh, he will be in the exhibit ha, sa ating ano exhibition online. Na kaibigan ko po siya, kasamahan ko sa Ag Agricultural Training Institute learning site po siya, Bagito, no, the farm manager and owner of the Lubsah Kahan Farm. Of course, to our trustee, Roland Suiko, our moderator, no? And of course, ang aking kasama sa nitong day talaga who's guiding me, of course, our president of Davao City Chamber for 2020, uh, Sir um, John Carlo Tria. Maraming salamat, sir, for guiding me. Ito na ang ating dream ng Davao Agri-Trade Expo, maging online. So, to our Davao Chamber members, to the supporting government agencies, corporate sponsors, event partners, and online exhibitors, nagkan salamat. Good morning. Indeed, this activity would not be successful without your unwavering support. On behalf of the Davao Chamber Board of Trustees, I would like to thank all of you for taking part in the final installation of the Day 2020 webinar series entitled Youth in Agribusiness, Shaping the Future of Agriculture. During our first Davao Trade Expo webinar last November 10, we are able to learn about the challenges and opportunities of the logistics sector and how to address them. Last November 17, the webinar regarding the innovative finance opportunities enabled us to know about the government and banks financing programs and services for the agripreneurs. Moreover, Today's webinar taught us that the minds of the youth can be harnessed in making agriculture as an entrepreneurial choice among them. Despite this and the negative business outlook, it is inspiring to see how many youths are looking at the crisis as an opportunity to innovate innovate. The problems faced uh, by the Bagito Magsasaka, uh, Yon, and Jairus, I mean, I believe over the past months are common. And their solutions are proof of youth's ingenuity and ingenuity and resilience no, in the face of crisis. Judging by their amazing response to the COVID-19 challenges, the youth of today are well equipped for the future. The resources are all available. The government has a lot of programs from the DTI, Department of Agriculture, DOST, ICT even, no? Um, of course, the TESDA, I encourage the young millennials, the MSMEs to take part in shaping our future, to take part, be part and become uh, a food, ano tayo, um, agri stakeholder, no? So take part in the agriculture, be an agripreneur. So we, your chamber recognizes the, invel of the, the, involvement, the involvement of the young people in food production and agribusiness essentially for a healthy world food system. No? Davo Agri-Trade Expo online page is a place where you can share your ideas, initiatives, experiences, and publications regarding uh, our youth in agriculture. Uh, the, the workshops and the trainings, please uh, check. Uh, there may be, I, 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 will, I will put them in the Agri-Trade uh, Expo online. No? Basta alam nyo lang sana tumingin at uh, where to look like the TESDA scholarship programs, marami po. Um, it is also where, uh, the place where you can see the updates, um, where we can learn from them and inspire, um, especially in this time. So, uh, well, this is not the end of the Davo Agri-Trade Expo. I invite all of you again to exhibit here online, and this will run for a year. So, in just a very minimum fee, one-time payment for one year. So um, it's just the beginning of our journey together on rebooting the country's agricultural system towards the new normal. We will bring lots of exciting activities coming up uh, for you in the, in the coming months. We really look forward for your support. 
um, remember, we need to feed the nation and you are part of it. So be an agribusiness stakeholder. Uh, once again, thank you so much and may the upcoming months be fruitful for all of us. God bless everybody. Good day to all at mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you, Trustee Roland. Thank you, VP Che. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the final installation of the Davao Agri-Trade Expo webinar series. Now we will continue to bounce back under the new normal of the succeeding Davao Agri-Trade Expo activities. So please stay tuned to Davao Chamber and Davao Agri-Trade Expo social media pages for more details and information. At this point, I would like to thank once again our sponsors and partners. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us today and let us always stay safe by following the minimum health protocols ensuring the health and safety of every Filipino. This has been Roland Suiko. Dagang salamat o maayong buntag. Davao City, one of the most vibrant economies in the world. And the world comes together because life is here. As Mindanao's primary investment hub, the city boasts its outstanding transport connection, production technologies, favorable climate, and vast fertile land suitable for agribusiness. As one of Davao City's strongest sectors, the abundant supply of agricultural products and availability of raw materials along with low labor costs make food manufacturing and other value-adding activities viable for investors. The city's top commodity produce include banana, coconut oil, and pineapple, exported to different parts of Asia, reaching as far as Europe, Middle East, and the United States. Hey! Hailed as one of the most secured and livable cities in the world, Davao City is your best investment destination, especially in agribusiness and trade. Now is the best time to invest here. Come and invest in Davao City! at the fullness of the Orient Seas, scattered gems of wonders right at the heart of the center of the Coral Triangle, the Philippines, with its 7,100 more islands, is a brewing paradise for your seafood pleasure. A country of infinites and teeming marine life sprawled across 220 million hectares of water the Philippines is home to the world's richest marine biodiversity. As one of the world's top fish producers, we give more than your usual regular seafood experience. Live, fresh, smoked, frozen, dried, fresh frozen, seasoned or plain, we offer the best variety for your seafood fancy however you like them to be. A socially and economically significant sector in the Philippines, fisheries provide livelihood to over 1.7 million fisherfolk. The bountiful seafood are caught sustainably using environment-friendly fishing gears from the seas that are dutifully managed, conserved, and protected for future generations.
coastal communities flourish and transform into lively, thriving eco-districts generating employment for fisherfolk and their families. Our seafood products have undergone meticulous selection and production process. Each product is prepared and transported from fish source to production sites using best practices in food handling and safety guidelines. Food safety experts ensure that our fishery establishments, seafood processing plants, cold storage facilities, and warehouses follow quality standards from the world's food safety authorities. From the abundance enjoyed by our people, the Philippines now shares the same delight to various countries in different parts of the world. Canned, bottled, fresh, or fresh frozen, it is our commitment to constantly boost and innovate the variety of our traditional and value-added fishery products. An array of tastes and flavors, a bursting concoction of delectable seafood found in the world's richest marine biodiversity. We are the Philippines. Choose our fish. Choose the Philippine seafood. The agricultural landscape of the Philippines is the backbone of the rural agricultural small household farmers, agricultural entrepreneurs, local agri-based manufacturing industry. With the Rapid Growth Project, the Philippine government envisions a strongly rooted, comfortable, and secured life to every Filipino. The project is a value chain development-based program involving market-driven agri-production and processing to achieve global market integration, covering four commodity value chains in seven regions and 20 provinces, including Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. This can be achieved through the partnership among government agencies, financial institutions, and the private sector collaborating to provide strategic interventions such as direct assistance through matching grants for productive investments in order to address market failures and encourage private sector investment, institutional strengthening, technical assistance to the rural financial service providers, innovative agri-financing, and management support, converging to include market-driven agri-production, increase productive capacity of small farmers to strengthen market linkage to benefit from the gain of commercial partnerships, transforming small farmers to become agripreneurs and bring trabajo, negocio, and kabuhayan for men, women, indigenous peoples, and persons who are differently abled. To reach more agri-based cooperatives and rural financial institutions to further develop more MSMEs and build commercial business partnerships with the rural communities. We can strengthen and sustain market linkages in the local and global market and achieve inclusive and sustainable economic development. The Rapid Growth Project is a value chain development. It is about inclusion, convergence, and collaboration. Atlanta. 
We work hard to create and provide you with products suitable to your needs, complemented by a delightful customer service experience. We are Land Bank, and we are here to help you grow wherever you are. With our array of financial solutions, as well as our development lending programs, we make sure that everyone enjoys the many benefits of banking with us. We bring our financial services closer to more Filipinos beyond the four walls of our branches. Now and in the coming years, Land Bank commits to serving you better. And with your support and our continued partnership, we can make a lasting impact on the lives of more and more Filipinos. We are Land Bank. We bank on Filipino ingenuity and perseverance that have no bounds. We're about sharing hopes and ambitions and nurturing them to life. We revere partnerships in the spirit of cooperation as keys to success. We believe in the Filipino's aspiration of triumph. We believe in you. Whatever your dream, whatever your goal, we are here to help you grow. This is our mission, and this is our promise to you. Most business operations and economic activities worldwide were put in halt due to the coronavirus pandemic. With this situation, Magsige MPC has adopted the present situation in order to ensure the continuity of the cooperative operations despite from the pandemic and rolled out the four identified strategy. Transition to online operations and cashless transactions. Launching of community response programs. Explore other income generating activities. And following the protocols for the COVID outbreak while executing the strategies. Transition to online operations and cashless transactions. The enforced lockdown during the coronavirus outbreak saw many organizations and businesses adopting a work-from-home scheme and shifting towards digital and cashless transactions. As part of Magsige MPC's business continuity plan and adopted the so-called new normal, Magsige MPC is now implementing its major shift to digitalize its operations. It had launched its own website via www.magsigempc.com to gain competitive advantage and improve the cooperative's image. This will help the cooperative in getting more leads and prospects, increase sales, enhance the Magsige MPC's professional brand, and ultimately improve its customer service. Aside from the website, the cooperative also engaged in putting up of different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, with the same purpose, to gain competitive advantage and ultimately improve its customer service. And with the partnership of Magsige MPC to the country's latest digital platform that will revolutionize the way cooperatives serve their members. DG Call. The platform enables the member to transact online. No need to line up for a loan application. No need to wait for weeks to receive claims and benefits. Introducing the DG Co-op Wallet App and Circle Card, where members will receive their payout, claims, and benefits without lining up. Apply loans online. No need to go to any Magsige MPC offices and pay your dues in over 40,000 payment centers. And the most exciting feature of the platform, cooperative members can shop online via DG Co-op Marketplace linked to Magsige MPC Online Store and the Magsige MPC Co-op Mart. Launching of Community Response Programs in times of severe crisis, like the coronavirus outbreak, it is fitting for Magsige MPC to channel the spirit of cooperativism by extending help to affected communities and whatever capacity it could. Such initiatives include production of protective equipment like coverall suits and face masks, continuing partnership with DepEd in the implementation of the cooperatives adopt a school program, conduct of donation drives in partnership with fellow cooperatives, the LGUs in the private sector to help those in need in these trying times, exploring of other income-generating activities, 
The coronavirus outbreak had put many business operations in limbo. In these uncertain times, it is crucial for Magsiga MPC to look for opportunities that can help generate income for the cooperative. This includes the production of additional relevant product lines for garments manufacturing, such as the production of bed sheets and pillowcases, undergarments and fashionable face masks under the brand gray. Also, it is timely for the co-op to engage into agri-production, including coffee and banana. Other opportunities include on-demand delivery service, Magsiga MPC online store that will bring the store at the doorsteps of our customers. There is also a great opportunity in the housekeeping services. The reason why Magsiga MPC launched its housekeeping services, its workforce with NC2 certification from TESTA. It is also the pride of the cooperative of having its own training and assessment center accredited by TESTA with accreditation numbers 20201124 TR. SHSK213012 and ACHSK0211241921304 respectively. Following the protocols for the COVID outbreak while executing the strategies, Magsiga MPC puts on top the safety and health of the personnel executing the projects. With the health and sanitary protocols to be implemented, no doubt that the cooperative can respond and adapt to the new norms despite of the pandemic. Inspired by its tagline for the year 2020, Magsiga MPC will continue to engage in the available possibilities and will show the world that we can. In 1968, the Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines came down to Davao to invite some businessmen here to form the local chamber to be affiliated with them. So a, a group of young executives headed by Attorney Ramon Tirol, Edmundo Madrazo, Joe Custodio, Joe Sibilia, those are the core group that organized the Davao City Chamber of Commerce. Of course, this is a Chamber of Commerce. The objective is to form a group so that we can have one voice, one voice for the business in our relation, firstly with the government, and in, secondly, in relation to other chambers, especially the national chambers and the other chambers of commerce abroad. Davao City Chamber, or any business chamber for that matter, is supposed to help small and medium scale business improve their business. Now, how do we do that? Uh, it brings all the small business together, particularly their problem with the local government or national government. The other concerns such as wanting to meet with their supplier, wanting to meet with a potential customer, or wanting to meet with a peer businessman in the same industry. Novo City Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, as the voice of the business sector of Davao City, has been actively conducting monthly membership meetings in order to know the recent trends and updates on business sector, and as well as get some insights, concerns, and issues of business community. With the Chamber's active involvement on the crucial issues surrounding the business community, it led to activities such as the dialogue on the proposed Dabao Sa Support Modernization Project, Forum on the Third Proposal Valuation Revision, and the Bangsa Moro Basic Law Forum. This is on top of the major events that Davao City Chamber conducts, such as the Davao Agri Trend Expo and Davao Investment Conference, in order to encourage investments in Davao and Mindanao in general. The purpose of our membership in the Chamber is first and foremost for business growth. Uh, the Chamber uh, represents for us a vehicle or venue uh, for our companies, products and services to be able to reach a wider or larger audience. And this is done by the uh, activities and events that uh, the Chamber undertakes, such as the trade expositions, the symposia, the business conferences. These activities allow companies from here and abroad to get together and uh, explore what they might uh, want to undertake uh, together uh, in terms of projects or advocacies. Monthly meetings of the Chamber 
uh, have provided us a fertile ground for obtaining this information from the speakers, from the guest speakers of the monthly meetings and from the issues and discussions that are raised by the chamber members, thereby enabling us to have a comprehensive view of the information that we need to be able to support our plans for running our businesses. Uh, we consider the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry as a very important partner in our advocacy for SME development as well as business development. They have been our partner since uh, the, the DTI started back in 1987 and we really hold that partnership develop and strengthen so that we can reach more MSMEs. We have implemented joint projects you know, with the uh, Double City Chamber of Commerce. We have our SME Center. We have our mentoring, mentoring of SMEs as well as uh, we have partnered in several big events such as their institutionalized date and other investment forum activities. And we wouldn't have done it that well without the Davao City Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber also is giving priority to anything that would improve tourism in the sense that tourism contributes a lot to what they call inclusive growth. The Davao Chamber is into advocacy to make everyone involved or stakeholders in the port understand how the port is doing and what to expect in the future. The partnership between the city government and the Davao City Chamber of Commerce has always been um, grounded on two values, that is on cooperation and on support. They have always been actively engaged in the formulation of programs that has helped propel the business environment of Davao City, seating as among the representatives of the private sector in the different boards and committees of the local government.